students are often introduced to the arithmetic mean in middle school. This idea of adding up a bunch of numbers and then dividing by the amount of numbers you added up. After some practice, it becomes an idea that we think we know intrinsically, but for all of our confidence, it's not so easy to explain. Try answering these questions and you'll see what I mean. What does the arithmetic mean tell us, and how does the arithmetic mean work? We need a general understanding about the arithmetic mean and why we care about it before we can continue onwards. Let's say that we have the numbers 4, 7, and 13. To find the arithmetic mean, we add up all of the numbers, then divide by the amount of numbers we have. The number we get is our arithmetic mean. Ultimately, the arithmetic mean tells us where the center is, just like the median, midpoint, and mode. These numbers are called measures of central tendency, and they give us a sense of the data we are dealing with. But if these all find the center, how are they different? To answer this question, we need to consider what it means to be the center. We will define the center of a list of numbers as the point that results in the minimum distance between all points and itself. Let's generalize a little bit. This expression is saying that we have our points, x sub k, and we are subtracting some center from all of these points, and then finding the magnitude of the subtraction. We need to specify finding the magnitude so that we don't end up with any negative numbers. Distances can't be negative. We are trying to minimize this expression. So let's take a quick look back at the previous picture to see how the expression connects to the picture. The expression inside represents the positive or negative units between the center and the point, while the magnitude bars turn this expression into a positive, usable distance. We now need to ask ourselves how we want to define distance. The answer that seems most obvious is to use absolute value, as that is always positive and gives the number of units away from zero a value is. This is a perfectly fine way to define distance. Using absolute value, we get this. Let's take a look at this function. We will use the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6. From the graph, we can see there is not just one minimum, but a whole interval. In this case, the interval is from 2 to 3. Let's take a small step back and think about why this is true. Imagine we have a number line that goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. We have our four points, 1, 2, 3, and 6. Starting at some number negative b, let's add some value a to our position. As all of our points are to the right of negative b, when we add a and get negative b plus a, the distance between negative b plus a and each point goes down by exactly a. As we have four points, this works out to a change in total distance of negative 4a. Let's say we keep doing this, repeatedly adding a until we reach our first number. Let's add a again. Now, the distance from one increases by a, but the distance to the other three points decreases by a. This gives us a net gain of negative 2a. Now we get to the second number. Let's add a again. Now, we are moving a away from two numbers and a towards two numbers. This gives us a net gain of zero. As we move through the interval between the two middle numbers, the net gain continues to be zero. Once we reach the third number, adding a means moving away from three numbers and moving towards one number. This corresponds to a net gain of plus 2a. This isn't what we want, because it means our distance is increasing again. We can therefore tell that our minimized distance occurs between the intervals 2 to 3. By convention, we usually say that the center is the number equidistant from the two points. In this case, it would be 2.5. Congratulations! We have just discovered the median, the middle of a list of numbers. If you're familiar with calculus, you may notice that we can take the derivative of this function and set it equal to zero, finding this interval very easily. 
For those of you that aren't familiar with calculus, the derivative is the slope of the function. By setting the derivative equal to zero, we are finding all of the places in the function where the slope is zero, in this case, the minimum. Differentiating, we get the much simpler express. Oh, come on! Even if we did have a nice expression, it would be useless when we had an odd amount of numbers in a list and got a graph like this. This minimum point has an undefined derivative, meaning that we can't even use derivatives. While computers can find the median very quickly using what is known as the k-select algorithm, 100 years ago, nobody wanted to order numbers in a list then one by one cross them out until the middle is found. Despite the issues, the median actually offers a lot. Most importantly, it doesn't take into account outliers any more than any other number, which can be a good or bad thing. The median ends up being reasonably robust, but there is a reason why we use the arithmetic mean so much more. This reason is mostly due to mathematical convenience. Absolute values are just really annoying to work with as we've seen. Instead of using absolute value as distance, mathematicians decided to use squared values. Squared values are much less annoying. For one, polynomials are really easy to differentiate. Also, squared values end up positive, which is really important. Unlike the median, having squared values means that outliers matter more. Slightly larger numbers squared contribute to the sum much more than slightly smaller numbers squared. 10 minus 3 squared is 13 larger than 9 minus 3 squared, even though 10 is only 1 larger than 9. Let's take a look at the case where we have this. Let's use the numbers 1, 2, and 9 for this example. In this case, we have a nice differentiable graph. The parabola will always have one minimum point regardless of if there are an even or odd number of terms. Now that we have this graph, let's see if we also get a nice and easy derivative. Remember that we are setting the derivative to zero to look for the minimum of this function. Taking the derivative, we get... Uh-oh. This doesn't look great. Let's do some algebra. We did it! It turns out that the formula for the arithmetic mean is just the derivative of a square distance function set to zero. This is the fundamental explanation for where the formula for the mean comes from. Hopefully now, every time you see the arithmetic mean, you will fully understand where it comes from.